like the day-to-day -day life. I think Dennis Schroeder even has like a vlog on YouTube and just saying like, oh, this is like my game day prep. And we're fans yeah. because we like these athletes. So the fact that these athletes are kind of giving us this insider access and behind the scenes look of what their day-to-day -day lives are like, I think it's very compelling yeah. for us to tune in and listen to. Well, welcome to The Brew. I'm your host, Valtteri Salamaki. Today, I'm joined with my co-host, Luis Macedo from Free Logic, as well as today we have John and Jared from Technically Foul. Both these guys are UC alumni, graduated in 2019 and 2020. But I'll let you guys introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about what is Technically Foul, and then we'll, we'll get the show started from there. You guys want to take it away? Yeah, go ahead, Jared. Oh, okay. You wanted me to do a little <laughs> interesting. Yeah, um, yes, sir. John messaged me a couple months ago saying, Hey, let's start a sports podcast. It was like in the midst of the pandemic when you go home from the grocery store and you like spray your cereal boxes because coronavirus stays on it longer, <laughs> like peak COVID. And when it came to a name, um, I just tried to make it something clever. And I was like, well, we, well, cause the intro is we take it more than, we take our sports more than personal. Mm -hmm. Manu, not too over the top where we get flagrant. So I was like, oh, technically foul, ah ha ha. So it was going to be like sports and it just, we ended up trying to cover like NFL and baseball and basketball, but over the past couple of months, it's literally just been basketball. So I don't know if the technically foul part just pertains to just basketball nowadays, but yeah. It definitely seems like it, but I mean, it's been a lot of fun. And like we talked about earlier, we did this in college too, which is why I felt pretty comfortable working with Jared too. And why I reached out to him because we'd already done it before and we had like a level of comfort. Yeah, so I mean, talk, talk a little bit about this. What, what, what were you guys doing uh, beforehand when it comes to your sport podcasting uh, like venture and then tying that into like, I know you guys also, you know, wrote in the paper and stuff like that. So like, what, what was your roles beforehand that made you guys super confident in starting a podcast tied into um, sports analysis? Because let's keep in mind, we talk about sports, people are hypercritical of whatever you say all the time. Like everybody got an opinion when it got to yeah. sports. So yeah. what, what made you guys confident enough to start a show based off of that? And it's funny because like nowadays, I feel like all fans kind of think they're sports journalists too, which makes it even more like divisive. But for us, we started, we did a radio at, K at UCR too, at the radio station called KUCR. We broadcast the team's basketball games and we also had like a sports talk radio show, which was a lot of fun. And I think that's how we got, we kind of got that confidence. Yeah. And you guys were also writing in the paper, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, we were doing all that we would, we would write for the sports section. There was one point where John and I were the only people in the sports section. So we would both have to write like two to four articles. And then weekly, we would have the radio show, like he said, and sometimes one to two times a week, we would broadcast both the men and women's basketball game, like play by play and color commentary, which was a lot of fun. I actually miss doing that a lot. And yeah. because of us working together for so long, once we got out of college, we we're like, oh, if we do this podcast, it's just going to be how it used to be back in college because we already have this like chemistry and relationship with each other in terms of just i don't know bouncing off each other's energy if mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah no it does, definitely I, does i also feel like just from like broadcasting the basketball games like you have to have a certain amount of knowledge of the game and like awareness of the terminology and what's going on to be able to talk about you know a sports podcast to be able to do a sports podcast you have to have that knowledge so that's why i felt pretty comfortable about it too you guys used to play uh, basketball or anything like that back in the day or have you guys just both been like huge advocates right and just like just love watching it and understanding the your nuances because i feel like that's where the two levels of sports broadcasters come from either those that like you know are in it have played it for such a long time come back and provide their analysis or those that just been following it you know from the ground all the way up and just understand all the nuances when it comes to the sport I've yeah. played since I was younger and it's pretty Play. funny because uh, <laughs> me and Jared, we have the, or I have this story with Jared because this one time in IMs, I scored 30. So like we were broadcasting one time, you could see he's covering his face, but like we were broadcasting and I brought it up on the air because I was just super hyped that I somehow scored 30 in an IM game. <laughs> but yeah, uh, to answer your question, I've been playing since I was, since I was pretty young. I want to say like first or second grade. I don't think I was ever like that good, but you know, I've been playing for fun and I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of it. Yeah, definitely the latter of the two. Um, I mean, I, I've been 
I've been like a Celtics fan since Antoine Walker was on the team, mm -hmm. like 2004, 2005. And I've always played it for fun, maybe since elementary or, or middle school or something. But it's not like I played it in high school and was some like standout athlete doing it or whatever. I played I played tennis in high school because I don't know. <laughs> I Individual sport. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> Damn, learning new things about you, bro. <laughs> that's, that's that's all a podcast is about is learning about the other person you're talking with. I think I learned a little too much about Luis over here and it scares me sometimes. But uh but go going into <laughs> the concept of technically foul. So like you guys now started this podcast and like you said, you guys are now focusing a lot heavily on on basketball and um what what is the main focus you guys have for the show? Like, what do you, what are you guys trying to build out of it um, when it comes to the the show concepts and what you're trying to analyze and stuff like that? I don't know if this is like indirectly happening, but it seems as if we're trying to represent like a Gen Z perspective on sports takes because we'll we'll kind of balance out the like old head versus new head mentality and like oh what what does like the narrative say like what what are they saying at espn or fox sports versus what are actual sports bloggers and what should people actually be thinking about what the headline is and if that's just clickbait so i don't know if it's like a balance between um like clickbait news and what's actually real and old head versus new school perspectives i don't even know if that's accurate if john would even agree with that <laughs> i think part of it is because we'll read off some of the stuff like if it's an espn headline on first take and stuff kind of laughing about it um like how they over exaggerate so much but i feel like we also at least i try to really mix in analytics and stuff too because i feel like that's something that's important where yeah there's the eye test which i think jared and i both rely on but there's also like what's happening behind that like in advanced stats too because i think that really tells a story and that's what people go off of nowadays like the professional sports journalists and at least for me i know i'm trying to build a career in sports journalism um i think jared is too so that's something we try to use as well no, i have a question i have a question for you guys and it's important because it, this to me is like the the um rorschach test are you more first take or uh, undisputed I don't, I, like I don't feel like we're either. I don't feel like we're either, to be honest. Really? Like, if you had to pick one, like, if you're like, this is the one that I'm going to, this is my camp. Because I, I, I'm undisputed. Like, I would rather wake up early and watch that than sit through, um, uh, sit through first take. I, I don't know. I just don't really, I don't really fuck with first take that much. Because uh, I don't like their takes. Like, pretty much, I, there's very yeah. few that I do like. Um, but undisputed, there are some takes that I can take. I hate Skip. I don't like them. But I like Shannon a lot, so I, I think that's why I think that's why I sit there and I listen to it. But I'd I'm curious on like, go for it, Jared. Oh, I was gonna say I'd probably lean towards more in this undisputed. Also, yeah. um, I feel like on some level the way that Skip is such a troll to LeBron, <laughs> and that he's yeah. been committing for this his entire career, I kind of respect it. I'm like, man, this dude just doesn't care. Yeah. Um, like Michael or Michael Jeffrey Jordan would would never let his hairline uh, get to that point of 36 years. Like that, that's like a skip take and that's something that he would say, honestly. Mm. I would say I find Undisputed just like more entertaining overall because after, when I'm watching first take, I find myself like rolling my eyes a lot at what they're saying. It's just like, come on, man. Like, you don't believe that. This is probably just scripted. Um, yeah. But with Undisputed, like they're, they're making jokes. Shannon Sharp is really funny. He, he comes in like wearing a goat mask and wearing a yeah. LeBron James jersey with Henny. Like, it's just yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah, I think that's I why mean, I like it so much. Yeah, and I mean, one question I had tied, tied into that when it comes to sport podcasting, like, where, where do you think uh, sports journalism is going to go? Because, for example, in the NFL side, I don't know if you guys follow at all, like Pat McAfee, uh, who used to be the Colts kicker, and he has his own show. Um, that's somebody who literally was in the league, and he's like, I screw screw all this, like, normal normal way of building a show and, like, all this, you know, bureaucracy tied into, like, ESPN and stuff like that. I'm going to make my own show. I'm going to joke around half the time. I'm going to have my own, you know, connections in the league to talk about it and shoot the shit. And uh, his show blew up. Like, he, he when I was watching him, he was at, like, 200K followers on, on YouTube subscribers, and now he's at, like, 1.2 million subscribers. So do you think that's also kind of where you think sports uh, journalism is going, just because the younger generations want some of the more entertainment factors into it and more like casual conversations. So it doesn't always have to be like, you know, by the numbers and like breaking it down and all that kind of stuff. Because 
don't get me wrong that's important as you guys taught it you have to bring up the analytics but it also has to be super fascinating have banter have all these other elements to it to make you like really grasped into and want to keep listening and, and bought into the stories that they're bringing in week after week uh tied into all these athletes yeah i think that's part of why Stephen a is so successful right because it's not like he's watching all these games but at the same time if you're entertaining someone's gonna give you like that max contract or whatever it was that he got from espn like at the end of the day people just yeah. want to be entertained and like that's what sports is about they want to be distracted from whatever is going on so i think naturally yeah like if you need to be entertaining while you're also giving out that information and i think there needs to be a balance and it's interesting because there are people like Zach Lowe and like Kevin O'Connor who focus more on the analytics side, but they still find a way to be entertaining too. So I think for myself anyway, I'm still trying to find that balance too. And I'm looking forward to, you know, me and Jared working it out together. No, definitely. I, I agree. I think the future of sports casting, podcasting or whatever will definitely stem from athletes having these platforms. Like JJ Reddick started a podcast. Duncan Robinson has a podcast. And the fact that all these athletes have a platform, it gives the fans a different perspective on like the day-to-day -day life. I think Dennis Schroeder even has like a vlog on YouTube and just saying like, oh, this is like my game day prep. And we're fans yeah. because we like these athletes. So the fact that these athletes are kind of giving us this insider access and behind the scenes look of what their day-to-day -day lives are like, I think it's very compelling yeah. for us to tune in and listen to. I think uh, I think one of the people who I like I got definitely closer to last season was Jimmy Butler just because of his YouTube channel. Like seeing him, like the dude's a fucking like for the playoffs last year. The dude's a dog. Like that man was like gunning for that chip. Um, and then like seeing that, and I was like, oh, he has a YouTube channel. And then like just seeing him like fuck around and like you know go into like a winery or like him on like a like a regular like prep day uh, or him just like messing around. I, I thought that was pretty cool. So now he's like uh as far as like people who i think are good players who are also decent people i think jimmy butler's kind of in that in that kind of range now um but no i think it's super important and you have like nba so you have like lebron james is looking for a fucking gaming chair now so he can start streaming and shit like <laughs> um you know you have he's gonna get a herman miller chair probably because everybody in the fucking chat was just spamming him about that shit um but then you have like ad who's already doing that you have shooter who's already doing that you have you know a bunch of people in the nba who are already streaming together and playing these games whether it's like gta rp um or you know they're playing warzone but that's i think it's going to go that way where like you have players who are on the court you know they're nba players but now you're starting to see the other side of it where it's like you get a little bit of like the human of it where it's like you know how weird would it have been if like you saw Michael Jordan put up some fucking crazy numbers and then like the next day on his off day, he was like fucking, uh, fucking streaming Crash Bandicoot or some shit, you know, like it's like, like Street that, Fighter or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it, it would humanize it a little bit, you know? Yeah, that's something me and Jared had actually been talking about too, just like the social media aspect and because we feel like there's this sort of mystic aura around Michael Jordan and that kind of era, whereas you look at like LeBron and he tweets out pretty much everything he's doing or Instagram's everything and just sort of how that affects their legacy too because years from now I don't know if LeBron's gonna have that same mystic aura that uh, MJ had just because he didn't have social media he wasn't always posting about what he was doing so yeah. I don't know that's just something interesting to think about yeah yeah like, I mean oh, go ahead. Well, I go I was just gonna quickly say that kind of knowing their day-to-day -day lives kind of takes and devalues the, the like legend aspect of it like we didn't know the day-to-day -day life of Michael Jordan but we know LeBron likes using nine hashtags on his fucking Instagram posts it's so because of that days. it's like he's not he's not badass he can't be the goat because we know too much about him yeah, yeah. I mean yeah, like if, it, if, if, if you think about it how athletes are nowadays it's like they're also realizing and I think Shaq started this to be honest is you you can monetize your external personality more than you can for your sports career because you got to think about it this way you're not an athlete forever you can't be so you're going to have to figure out how do you create revenue streams afterwards to be relevant, right? So yeah. by them doing things like streaming, building a social media following, by doing all these other avenues, is once they retire, they can do a lot of stuff that still makes them bank. And they don't have to worry about it because that was a huge issue with athletes in their like 80s and 90s. They, a lot of them went broke, dude. They they made so much money. Yeah. They blew it on random stuff. They didn't have no idea how to finance stuff. They had no careers afterwards and they lost all their money. So I, I think that's just like a it's a, it's a good shift in the athletes also understanding that their brand is a business and they should they should work on that and build it out 
not every athlete can do it, right? Like some athletes are just, <laughs> nobody knows who they are. They're, they're just there, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're support players and they're important pieces to the team, but it's hard for them to, you know, make a brand for themselves because nobody yeah. remembers their name. Um, but for those athletes that can have their name be out there, I think it is so important that they, they build a brand off the, off the court, off the field, um, because that's going to let them prosper and like do really, really well, um, afterwards or just, I mean, I yeah, it's, it's just interesting watching that. I think Shaq started that whole thing though, because he, oh, yeah. his personality was just like, everybody's like, you can't be doing this. He's like, dude, watch me. Like, I'm just going to be in every commercial you're going to ever see in your life. I see hot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a, he has so many endorsements. It, for for no reason he he takes him like he's fucking broke um but to <laughs> to to your point um i think it'd be really funny to like you know like i think one of the coolest times in the nba was like the bad boy pistons like that was just like to me it's like fuck yeah dude like that's when people were like fighting each other and like like literally like literally just opening each other in the guts um but like how weird would it have been if like you saw that on the court and then like they're tweeting about how much they love their fucking family and like tweeting about their dog like <laughs> you know like the, tweeting about like all that shit like it would take away i think and to your point it would take away that like cool factor and like that like legend factor of of what they were back in those days i, I think now with the oversharing it takes away that like monk in the fucking tower and on the mountain just like training every day all yep. day you know yeah, I don't. I don't want to watch the Pistons battle the Bulls and then watch Bill and Beer like play Warzone. Or, yeah. well, in that era, I don't know. You know, I yeah. feel like that yeah. might It'd actually be, be entertaining with the like nasty streak he had. I feel like that could actually be funny. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. You might be right too. I don't know. But I mean, you're definitely right on that point, though. I feel like it would take away, and it could take away their edge too. Like you said, mm -hmm. if they're tweeting about their family, people back then, I feel like would get really into the trash talk. So. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yep. Dif di di different era man like the the trash talking what you get away with back then i mean like yeah like if you just watch like how what was a foul then and what is a foul now like it's yeah it's 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 changed so much like the nor like fights on the court and stuff like that if that happens today dude you're you're just straight up ejected suspended and you're gonna have a nice fine on your ass well, so well, like Lu luca gets fucking <laughs> luca gets ejected just for like like coughing towards the fucking reps at this point so it's like uh, you know anything at this point gets you out of there yeah but i mean it, it's it's changing people got involved with it like we can't always say like you know that was that tough sport back then that was that tough sport back then because like yeah ev everything's changed a lot and i think athletes just need to evolve and and, and and get with the times but i think it's just overall interesting to see like you know sports journalism um that's completely changed it's been more open there's more like insiders now that kind of build their own shows on youtube and can leverage social media to grow it um you have athletes that are building out their brands but what else do you guys think is like in the in the future when it comes to like sports journalism or um, how how like this insider information is going to happen or where sports are going to go? Because leagues are changing also with the rules. I mean, I, I don't know how much you guys have followed like the NFL rule changes they're constantly doing and like a lot of beef that they have with, for example, they want to change like the helmets and there's like position required helmets and stuff like that they were trying to do. And all the athletes are like pushing back on it and like making the season one game longer, which increases, you know, probability of injuries. So like athletes are also like trying to retire earlier and like they're the whole system's kind of changed a little bit. So do you think that has a direct tie into some people wanting to be an athlete and then become a sports broadcaster, right? Like and that's like in their 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 kind of pipeline journey because they realize they can do both. I think, I think the really athletes cool. with like stand up personalities were are just looking more towards Oh, I can be a broadcaster when my career is done. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think, yeah, I don't know. That, that's all, honestly, all I had to really say about it. Go ahead, John. <laughs> the idea, though, of like ending your career earlier to do that, I don't know if I would. I mean, maybe it just depends <clears throat> on what your priorities are, right? Because mm -hmm. obviously in the NFL, probably being the 14th man would get you more money than being a broadcaster, I'd assume. It depends like how polished you are and whatnot and how many years you've been doing it. But I feel like... It depends on if they're prioritizing money or if they're prioritizing health because mm -hmm. that's something that's obviously very important to guys and i think it's becoming more and more important clearly to the league too if they're starting to mandate like different masks for different or different helmets for different positions too so i would say it just depends on what you're prioritizing but something you were talking about too in terms of like where sports journalism is going i'm actually gonna be going to northwestern and it was funny because i had a like a little conference call with the director of the sports media like uh like that um 
major sorry I, don't, mm-hmm. I forgot what word it was but basically what he was saying was like keep an eye on tiktok actually because mm, tiktok yeah. is like a clear emerging <sighs> different form of social media it's totally weird to think about like sports news coming from tiktok but yeah it's i mean people didn't see podcasting coming people like often don't see what's coming next so i thought that was super interesting just because i'd never even thought about that i didn't yeah. want to bring it up because i assumed it was inevitable that it was just gonna happen. <laughs> TikTok is just is just this giant. It's a giant. I'm not on it, nor do I watch in like Instagram Reels to look at TikToks. But it's it probably there probably is a future. There probably is a present already, like media presence on TikTok. I'm sure. Like if you were to think about barstool sports and what their I don't know their like assignment is, they're probably on TikTok already, probably. promoting whatever they do. So yeah. I'm sure there's a future in that for all of these different types of sports media personalities and broadcasters yeah i mean yeah, short sure. form content is definitely dominating over long form content in general right now like long form yeah. content like a, a podcast has value and you can get a really good following to follow a podcast but just for attention span and getting people in like people only want to watch like a minute and then either agree with you or not but i think that's dangerous for sports broadcasting because it's like in one minute how do you even like you know sophisticatedly bring up an opinion it just sounds like you just said some random points and you already i you can see the chats everybody's just talking shit and be like no that, mm-hmm. that's bull crap dude that's the blah 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 everybody has their mm-hmm. own opinions and get toxic real quick but yeah you um, didn't read the book you just spark noted it exactly just read the summary yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly but uh i mean i think TikTok obviously like that's something that everybody needs to focus on because that is just a, it's a growing platform and like it's inevitable like you can say like i hate it blah 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 but it's like dude if everybody jumps to that i'm sorry but like you're gonna have to move to it eventually but the other thing is like YouTube is right now, they're they're slowly starting to roll out their their reels. Um, so like if you build a YouTube channel, now you can leverage their short form content flow. I don't think anybody can make a platform as good as TikTok just because of how TikTok has created their algorithm for the For You page. It's just so smart. Yeah. Like it's just better than any other platform that exists out there. Even YouTube, you know, Google owns it. They can do all this stuff, but they're still going to be limited in the functionality. But um, that's where I'd be saying is like, uh, if, if you're really trying to build out like, you know, journalism side you have to think of like how can i take this idea and just make it into a minute content either post it on tiktok post it on uh you know instagram reels youtube reels um but that's unfortunately where you know some of the sports uh, journalism is just gonna have to go like you're gonna have to be able to say it take one minute um which which can be very detrimental to the industry but that's what the consumers yeah. want so it's it's a balance of both yeah and i feel like it, I mean, I feel like it could be not necessarily good for the industry, but I, I think it'd be a good way to gain interactions because it seems like that would be a prime space for just spewing out hot takes one after the other and just getting the most amount of interactions with people either hating it or loving it. Like, I could easily see that being successful. Yeah, I, I can see uh, I, the, the ones that I can see like happening now are like like the Shacking a Fool series like that like that is so easily transferable over to TikTok. you just kind of change the format a little bit make it vertical and kind of go with it from there um but as far as hot takes go i i can i can see like if stephen a smith was like to transition himself onto TikTok, yeah. that he would he would get a lot of engagement <laughs> just because his fucking his takes are hot to say the least most of the time yeah i actually had someone on linkedin reach out to me about it's a sports version of TikTok. I'm not gonna like list the name or whatever because this is mm-hmm. a shameless plug. I'm not endorsed by them. But <laughs> when I when I use the app for a while, the it's it's basically TikTok with like sports debating. And like you record your take and within 10 seconds, and then it's like a thread of people replying to your take. I don't know if that's necessarily sustainable, but like the fact that this is an idea now and we're talking about it just goes to show where it could go possibly depending on what different paths um like short form content sports media will will go towards yeah i mean i I think the interesting thing there though is like i think you can make a platform for that but i don't think it's going to be long living just because consumers want like why why go to a single platform for just sports takes if i can go to TikTok and see all these different takes and curate my for you page right like i I think that's the one issue with some of these niche social media channels because i i've seen some uh channels really try to build around like yeah like quick takes on on sports broadcasting and like sports ideas and, and build a really good following based off of that um but i i just feel like it's it's hard to sustain that right because unless you have kind of consistent flow of everybody who has like something to say about what you're talking about um you, you can't reach new audiences versus on a TikTok, you can reach people that might have not been so bought into sports at that point in time they're not going to download a separate app 
but they can find your content and they'd be super bought into it. So there's just kind of like that balance of both worlds where um, you just got to play around with different things, but it still goes back into like short form content and like having those quick conversations with people and, and what they think overall. Um, but go, going off of that, I think uh, where, where we can turn the conversation a little bit about is, uh, you know, NBA playoffs are just around the corner. Uh, yeah. And I definitely wanted to have, uh, I'm definitely the worst yeah. first person here when it comes to the NBA. So I'm going to be quiet for like the most part and just say like three things in between. But I'm really interested actually hearing uh, from, from people because I know Luis, um, watches the NBA religiously. I know you guys are analyzing the NBA. So I'm actually really interested to hear your guys' takes on like the current, you know, standings uh, and what you guys think actually about, about the Lakers overall and how the, what their playoff soaps are. For me, the only quick take I have is I, I still don't understand how the Phoenix Suns are in second seed. Like that's the- What are you talking about, bro? Chris, they got Chris Paul, that's all, that's all you need. I know, we were talking alone. about- <laughs> We're doing the dude alone. He, li he lifts up the fucking win percentages by like two, like 20%, like any fucking team that he touches. It was, it was second last to second, bro. Like I don't, I don't yeah. get it, but, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I what, what you guys take takes on everything? Yeah, I'm interested to hear uh, Luis's take just because uh, I know like they've, the Lakers specifically have been so unhealthy the whole year with AD yeah. and LeBron just coming back. So I want to hear what your take is too, because for me, I'm definitely concerned just because it doesn't seem like they've been able to develop a chemistry, especially with Drummond and yeah. Schroeder was out with COVID and now he's coming back. So that's something that can really hurt a team. I think we saw that with the Clippers last year. So I'm just interested to see where your head's at too. I think... So here's my here's my thing. I'm gonna, I'm pulling up uh to I'm pulling up the standings and I'm pulling up the re the less, rest of the games that are left right now. Um. So I I think, like I'm fuck dude. I I'm a Lakers fan, so I'm gonna tell you like oh don't worry dude they'll fucking find it they'll get the chemistry you know they'll do all that shit. Um and I think they will because I like to your point about the Clippers last year, like they didn't have chemistry and they just fucking lost because everybody there wanted to be the hero, like everybody like. Um, whether it was, uh, oh, what the fuck's name, Paul George trying to, trying to like get those game winning shots and then fucking airballing it or hitting the back of the fucking, the backboard. Uh, it, and then you have, you have that chemistry. So you have Kawhi, who's a fantastic player. Then you have Paul George, who's trying to be like the star, even though he shouldn't be trying to be the star. Like you're the two guy, like chill on that, you know? Um, and I think that really fucked up the chemistry a bunch because they were just both trying to be the, the star of the show. I'm thinking that the Lakers is a little bit different because the whole team knows that it's AD and LeBron and it's really LeBron and like who, like give the ball to LeBron. LeBron will control the court and he'll see what the fuck the best play is. Um, I'm hoping that because of that, they, they can hold their own. Um, if they play the Warriors in the play-in tournament, um, they're going to, I think they're going to beat them. Like it's, it's going to, it's, it might not be like an easy win, but I think they'll beat them just because right now Curry's going off and I'm I'm almost willing to bet dude if, if that guy has his back against the wall he can drop a 60 bomb like no doubt about it um so it, it's one of those things so we're like I think the the chemistry they have is good enough to get them to the point where they need to be I'm glad that LeBron is playing right now right against the Pacers oh uh, yeah it's gonna be his first game back yeah um so I'm glad that they're doing that because I was scared that Vogel was going to keep them out for these last two, keep him out for these last two games and just fuck up like any chance of building chemistry before the plane or before the playoffs. Um, so I'm glad that he's playing this time around because um, it, it's a mixed bag, dude, with Drummond. Like he's he's an amazing like he can get boards like no other dude. Like that guy is a monster underneath the rim. Um, but like when it comes to points and consistency on him actually scoring on the other side, like that that's where it's like kind of sketched to me. Like he sometimes he puts up like, you know, 15, 20 points and other times he puts up like eight points. Like it's like he has no me. real offensive game. It's just like lobs yeah. mainly. And when he tries to go in the post and face up, it usually does not end well. It, no, it doesn't. It, it, he can't. It's weird, dude, because he can't go in for layups like you think his like he's tall. So you think it'd be easy for him to just like drive in and and put something up, but I, I don't know if he just his leg work just needs just needs something there. But um, the person who I think I have a lot more faith in is still Trez. Like he's a wild card for sure, but he's also like, like he's proven that he's really fucking good, especially when it comes to you know putting his body on the line and pushing in and driving in for those layups. Um, so I I can see a situation where like Drummond. Like he's he gets played, but the real like 
clutch times, it's it's going to be Trez in there, I, I think. Yeah, me the fact that he's just a liability in the clutch, and what is career free throw percentage? Like 46% <laughs> or something like that, like something absolutely terrible. And that's just, this is a big liability for him to be there during clutch minutes. And I don't know, I don't think you're going to want him on the floor if they can just hack a shack, hack a drum at him and just intentionally follow him and just, just slow down the pace of the game. It's just, you don't want him out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and in right. closing minutes, they're probably going to have, I'm assuming they're probably going to have like AD at the five. That's what they did a lot last year. Yeah. That way they can kind of go smaller and have him at the five. But overall, like even looking at the play in and where they line up, like them against the Suns, I feel pretty confident about just because mm -hmm. they're so much yeah. bigger than the Suns. And even without LeBron, they beat them like last yeah. week. So after that, I think they would play three six, which I think it would be like Nuggets Blazers. And I feel I feel pretty confident about that too. I think they usually beat the Nuggets, and the Nuggets don't have Murray right now. So, yeah. Overall, I think like really the only team that could beat them in the West is probably the Clippers. Yeah, I think. That's, yeah, I, I think uh, that might be it. I was talking to Val yesterday when we were getting drinks. I said, um, I really want to try to go to the play-in tournament if it's with the Warriors. Like, uh, I'll try to I'll try to get those tickets. But then I told him. I am I am mentally preparing my brain to pay like ten to twelve hundred dollars to go to like a game three Clippers Lakers Western Conference Finals, like like that that to me like I think unless uh, the Clippers curse stays true this year um, and they don't make it past what the first round, second then round. second round. If they don't make it past the second round, then I'm I, I'm almost willing to wager that it's going to be a Lakers Clippers Western Conference Final. If Would they don't you bet on them, Jared? That. Would you bet on the Clippers to make it that far? See, I don't know how much I trust playoff Rondo to show up again. Because that, that dude just, it just depends on his mood and when, what he feels like doing and if it's the playoffs or not. So, I don't know. I don't know if that necessarily carries their hopes to a point, but I, I kind of believe in playoff Rondo. Does playoff P, do you believe in playoff P? No, oh, no, 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 we, we don't, <laughs> no, we don't talk about, yeah. we don't talk about playoff P. Um, <laughs> you know, Kawhi on, on some certain occasions during like elimination games hasn't been playing that well either, mm. which is, I feel like a stat that doesn't really get highlighted as much. I don't yeah, know. He, was it a, the, fuck, who, who, who took them out last year? Was it the, the Nuggets? Nuggets? Yeah, the yeah. Nuggets. Um, when the Nuggets took them out, the last game, didn't he, weren't, uh, the last half didn't, uh, Fucking playoff P and Kawhi only score like ten points combined or something like that. Or they were bad. That. They were yeah, they were terrible. The Some, second half like was that. awful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I mean, I think if they just get put under pressure, like some people hold, and some people don't. I I still to this day will hold. Like I will fight to the to the death, dude. I'll fight the fact that um, the uh, the Raptors shouldn't have earned shouldn't have gotten that chip. Like the only reason they got that chip was because of all the injuries that fucking happened um kd to, and clay going down exactly in yeah. was it literally the same game or like yeah yeah so it's like they they look cool they got it that's their chip you know run with that shit you got it but at the end of the day dude it was just literally injuries because the warriors were gonna fucking we're gonna smack them around for sure if they were actually healthy yeah and yeah. hearing about that playoff run it's just so weird because Kawhi was insane during the playoff run he was insane he was against it up. the sixers yeah. He was insane against the Bucks, against against the Warriors. And then we thought we were, he was going to be able to carry that over when he joined the Clippers the very next season. And then when you see him kind of melt down against the Nuggets, you're like, is this bigger than him? Is this a really Clipper curse, like, seeping into his play? But I don't know. I guess this clutch play thing is, you know, there's ups and downs to, to it, man. Yeah. I, I guess it's just I mean, inconsistent. I don't know. Don't get me wrong, dude. I, I love Kawhi because you kind of have to if you're from Riverside or from the yeah, IE. Yeah, for real. Like, yeah. you, you're literally, like, if you don't, like, have at least, like, respect for the man, then yeah. get the, you're just a hater, dude. Get out of here. <laughs> like, like the dude, the dude's from yeah. here. Um, You know, shout out to fucking King High, well, King High School, right? Is that where he played? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally in Riverside or in Moreno Valley. Um, Yeah, he's from here. He played in San Diego, stayed local. You know, he and then he shot over to what Spurs, right? That's who picked yeah, him up the first time. The Spurs for a while. Or the Pacers drafted him and then they traded, I think, the same day. Oh, okay. The same day yeah. 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 And then he got a ship with the fucking Spurs and then immediately just shot over to, to the fucking Raptors. Yeah. yeah. 
So the dude's like, don't get me wrong, I respect the dude, but at the same time, I don't think he can really. I think he's losing his grip a little bit. He's losing the edge, for sure. I think so. Yeah. So I mean, out of out of the uh, current playoff brackets, like, who who do you think is going to be in versus the East versus the West? Who's going to be in the championship game? I mean, at the end of the day, this is all speculation. We don't we don't know. Wait, any, the, the, the finals. finals? Final. Final. Who's who's going to be in the finals, man? Like it's, I, it's the same way. Like when you do your March Madness brackets, everything you guess is going to be wrong most likely. But I'm I'm actually yeah. fascinated here. Like who, who do you realistically think will be in the finals, East versus West, uh, playing in that that finals game, um, based yeah. off the the teams are going in. Obviously, there's so many scenarios. It really depends on who's <clears> playing who. Um, that's the reality of it, right? Because there's certain matchups that some teams are just going to get knocked out, but. Who, who yeah. do you think is going to be in that finals? We'll, we'll we'll recap this back when the finals are and <laughs> make some bets. But you know, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll put some fucking money down. Uh, uh, so uh, John Jared, I'm here. To, I'm curious to see. I'll go last. I'm curious to hear what you I, guys. I guess the up. the safe bet would be Nets Lakers. Yeah, mm. I I guess I don't yeah. know. I, I I trust Brooklyn to obviously get out of the East. I know mm-hmm. Philly's been great. Doc Rivers, the way he's been utilizing it, be just literally bringing them out past the free throw line has like helped open up the space so much more um i just feel that kd hard and kyrie is just hard to contain in the playoffs like who are you gonna guard and take the l yeah. on like sheeping off on defense so brooklyn will come out the east and i know the lakers blah 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 they struggled with injuries and stuff but they have lebron i hate to yeah. say it that way but they just have lebron and he's, yeah. he's he's doing fine barring any injuries he'll he'll be fine and i think the lakers will just I don't know. I, I feel like the Lakers clawing out the conference finals will probably be one of the hardest, um, hardest matchups they'll face Dude, in the West. The West is absolutely fucking stacked. Like you look at yeah, the East, the East always like, sucks. Always yeah, is that. <laughs> the East has like four or four or five good teams now, but like the West, there are good teams all the way down to like the eight seed. Like, yeah. and that's that's the crazy thing, dude. Like the shit's fucking stacked in the West. Yeah, but just in terms of the favorites, though, I think I'm probably the same way, except maybe I'm debating Philly, Brooklyn, because it's like the same thing. I do wonder about injuries and that's like chemistry. That's the thing I weigh versus just like overall talent. Yeah. And and it's tough because like how many games have KD, Harden and Kyrie played together? What's going to happen when a game is close down the stretch? And Philly's strength is defense. But again, like it's hard to defend those three guys. So... Mm -hmm. That's the one that's kind of like up in the air. I would probably lean Brooklyn just because of the talent. Like it's overwhelming, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Philly made it. Yeah, yeah the, the contrarian in me is like <laughs> hoping that Brooklyn kind of implodes. I don't know if that makes me like a <laughs> no, no, like, absolutely not. You know what I mean? Like I, I want, yeah. <laughs> I want to see them fail. I'm, yeah, I just do. You, there's too much talent there for like it's it's too easy to, to be on their side i think so yeah. you want to kind of see that shit go down yeah it's like this is and, too good of a scenario to happen like what could go wrong mm, let's see yeah i mean i i think um so what my head is saying i agree with you too i think my head is probably leaning towards uh the sixers or the nets um but what my heart wants is for Giannis to finally get in a fucking in a finals <laughs> you know it's like um, do I think he could do it? Maybe. That's a stretch, but it's what my heart wants. Like, I just want him to play. And, like, if, if it's, like, uh, Bucks, Lakers, I think it'd be, like, super cool to have all of the freaking Antetokounmpo brothers playing against each other. Um, that, that for me, that'd be so sick. Um, and I'm sure for them as well. But safe bet, yeah. Um, Brooklyn, just their offense is uh, stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, dumb. Um, but like you were saying, the Sixers, they have they they have it's more it's that's on both ends of the court um i'm hoping like like you're saying that they just fucking implode because like think about yep. it like this dude the when you think when you think about like the was it the how many games did the fucking warriors lose like in their like their run on in 2016 um where they only lost like i think it was just once. some shit it was once oh you're talking about when they went 73 and 9 yep. yes yeah 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 oh, so was, they went seven, pretty rough yeah yeah, so they went 73 and 9. And so they just fucked it up. They just absolutely fucking just took it, you know? Um, but still, like, it, it's like, at, at, and that's like with the weapons that they had there, right? And they had, you know, that's when they had KD. And that's when I think they also had Iguodala and everybody like that, right? Still on still on there. You have the Nets. Oh, this is, this is before KD. 
the, the this is before they did. This is, this is before KD. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is, uh, this is Yeah. Um, that's what I'm saying. I want though. Iguodala. They, <laughs> yeah, they had those weapons, and uh, <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> they had, He's like, they, you. That's they, my favorite take, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They had, they had those weapons and they did that record. And now you have arguably like some of the like, like top three of the top 10 shooters in the in the league. And um, they, they are nowhere close to that record. So I think looking at that stat line is enough for me to be like, they might actually implode. Like, yeah, there were injuries. They were all this shit happening. But at the end of the day, even if I have one, two superstars playing on the court at the same time, that record should still be fucking solid. Like they should be the number one in the East and they're not. So I, I, I honestly think that they might, they might just go down just because there's too much, too many hotheads. You guys, you just, you guys just don't see a, a, an opportunity for the jazz to kind of pull it out when it comes to the West. You just <laughs> What's he think, talking about, dude? I'm not a believer in the jazz. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a believer either. Yeah. My my main my main like argument against the Jazz is the fact that the Houston Rockets when Harden was there in 20 um 2018 2019 runs and they yeah. won like 65 games. They were so good in the regular season and I mean yeah they ran into like an historic Warriors team but the fact that even with the Milwaukee Bucks the fact that we'll see like a historic regular season you just have to be able to sustain it in the playoffs. Yeah. And the fact like it's great that the Jazz are doing this but we haven't seen them you know travel that far in the playoffs yet so until i see that i won't try to believe it yeah, yeah. Of, uh, i think it's it's so important on like who actually leads a team right like who, who is those people that have the experience to run the playoff runs it's the same in any sport right that's why like yeah. when when the when the playoffs started i was like bucks are going to be the super bowl i don't know if they're going to win but they're going to be the super bowl like you can't tell tom brady that you're not going to be like he's going to he's going to find a way to win like that's just yeah. like the personality of some of the players and if you don't have that personality in your team and you're a really good team yeah. You're gonna end up choking in one way, shape, or form. Like that's just gonna happen. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I was like a little bit concerned when they got rid of Rondo, just because mm -hmm. it's like, while well, like I feel like you want that like look like the only people that are real veterans on that were veterans on Lakers, really like tough ones, it was Rondo and LeBron. Like so, you have that you have those like two kind of on the court leaders during the playoffs that can kind of like calm you down a little bit and be like, hey, yo, chill out. You know, like we know we're, we're cool, we're chilling. Um, Jared Dudley, bro. What do you mean? Fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> I, I I tweet that motherfucker every day. I'm like, Dudley, give me some fucking tickets, bro. I'm getting tired of <laughs> yeah, I'm getting tired of yo. this shit, dude. Let me let me be your baby mama, dude. Like, let, let's let's yo. figure some shit out, dude. <laughs> let's figure let's figure some shit out, dude. Let, let's get together. Let, let's link up, dude. Now, Jared Dudley always fucking ignores my DMs, dude. I slide in every day. Um, <laughs> but I, I like the, wow. I was gonna say, dude. I out of I've told you the story about, but out of out of sheer respect for myself, I can't root for the Jazz just because their security kicked me off of their premises uh, for <laughs> when I was when I was in Utah. I was really? I was yeah. So I was waiting for the store to open because I wanted to buy uh, like I wanted to buy like uh, a fucking hat, like a, just like a Jazz hat from the actual like place. Yeah. And uh, it was closed because we were there early. Um, we were there for like a like a shoot, and I got one of those lime scooters and I started like jumping it off of the steps. <laughs> so so we were just like fucking around doing donuts with the lime scooters and like going around and like two security guards just like ran towards us they're like get the fuck out of here they're like you need to leave this place and we were just like whoa chill we're like waiting for this place we're waiting for the store to open and they were just like you're not waiting for anything to open bro get out of here leave and we we're just like fine and we left so ever since then dude i can't root for the jazz how dare they i was trying to spend money on them were you drunk no this is like at 11 a.m this is this is this is sober Louis. You know, you know, like, you know, <laughs> you know, no, one drunk I, Louis. Bro, this, drunk Louis, bro, we would not be able to go to Utah again, dude. <laughs> yeah, fucking. This this was early. I had just had my Starbucks. This is I was chilling, dude. I was so I was sober as a whistle. I was also in Salt Lake City. It's so hard to get alcohol in Salt Lake City. It's yeah, I was sober. Yeah, yeah. I'll take a shot of milk, no vodka. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, okay, who? Get, I want my coffee caffeinated, and they're like, oh shit, this motherfucker is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he must be atheist. Oh my god. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be careful, bro. <laughs> oh, anyway, out of, out of respect, bro. I can't, I can't root for the Jazz. I'm a. If I ever become famous, I gotta tell him, dude. Your security fucking kicked me out for doing jumps on your, on your premises. Um, oh my god. That's not your fault, though. You know it. Is it though, dude? Come on. Yeah, you're out here acting like a buffoon, loitering on the side, <laughs> doing donuts on the line. Well, like, yeah, no. No, I get it. I get it. No, it, it's. It's it's a fun story though. Getting kicked out of the fucking jazz premises, I guess, is I'll be able to tell that until the day I die. But now, I I think, like I said, 
Sixers, I think Sixers are going to take it. Um, like if I had to really, if I, I'm hoping that they implode, that the Nets implode, and it's the Sixers. But again, I want the Bucks, dude. Fuck it, give me the Hawks, dude. <laughs> Sounding like Bill fuck Simmons, bro. Fuck Bill it, Simmons, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, give me the give Hawks. Me the, give me the fucking Hawks. Give me the Knicks. Give me yeah, the Knicks. Give, oh, dude, dude, if the Knicks, oh, dude, I went to the to the Lakers Knicks game the other day. Like I was there, and. The amount of fucking I wanted nothing more when the uh when the Knicks were up and like holding that like two, three point lead. Mm-hmm. Um Spike Lee was in, on fucking court side. I wanted dude, I wanna know I, I could see his ass. I wanted nothing more than to just get my fucking phone and like fling it at his ass and like clock him in the head. Dude, it felt so good. Like I saw when like LeBron and AD were talking shit to him. Like I literally saw it and I was like, fuck yes, dude, like fuck that guy. I was like, he was he was talking mad smoke the whole fucking game to the whole to the whole Lakers. Like you could see his ass as the Lakers were coming down the second half. Um, he was just like you could see him standing up and like spouting just bullshit, dude. So I was so hyped that that the Lakers won that game, and he just fucking sat there literally as like LeBron and AD were like waving by to him. He just sat there staring at them like, God, man, it's. No more, uh, so so much pride to be a Lakers fan at that moment, dude. You're a menace to society, but I respect it. Hell yeah, dude, you got to, <laughs> you got to be. This is an iPhone 10, dude. This is it's worth like a hundred dollars now. I, I got nothing to lose. <laughs> you got more money in Dogecoin, bro. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Oh my god. And, All right, well, so, we got we got the uh, hot take. So we got we got we got. It sounds like Nets, Lakers, and then Sixers, Lakers. That's that's the that's the the spread right now on what what you guys think. I feel like if I was just to pick, I'll just pick like the most random ass team and watch me be right. I'll watch you be like, all right, it's gonna I'll be take, uh, it's I'll gonna be the Bucks baby. versus the Suns. Just fuck it, you know. Let's see what happens. But no, I'm, no I, I, dude, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a fan, I, I'm offended that you even said that right now. I'll be honest, with you, <laughs> I'm kidding, dude. But I, I really do think the Lakers won't be there. Just to your guys' point, right? Like, you can't, you can never count out LeBron. But I, I think the important thing there is, I, I do think the Lakers. <clears throat> Are going to be in trouble if there is any new injuries though the second there's a new injury i think there's no way the lakers will make it to the finals. bro we, we were joking the entire <laughs> next game like you'd see like ad like hobble a little bit and i'm like oh that motherfucker's back is fucking twitching right now dude like yeah. ad is always spasms, on the bro. floor he's the always spasms. diving yeah for real i mean good for him dude he wants that fucking rebound but chill dude like you're fucking yeah. back spasms man <laughs> um can i can't have you fucking sliding around the fucking court like during the playoffs you know um, but I'm, I'm curious to change it into Val's world because he knows a lot more um, about football. Um, even though it shouldn't be called football for some, for some reason, they named it. You only you only use your foot three times in the game, you know. <laughs> yeah, seriously. punting, yeah. field goals, and kickoffs. That's it. But you know. um, it should it should be called handball. I don't know why the fuck it's called football. Um, so <clears throat> what's what's your take right now? Who's the favorite? I'm gonna put it in your list. Shit hasn't even started yet. The fucking preseason hasn't even started. Who's your favorite for the Super Bowl? It, it's honestly the Bucks are stacked again. Did, did you see what they were able to do yeah. with their cap spin in the offseason? How much and the, money do the Bucks have now? It's it's dumb. So money. the Bucks, <laughs> money, money, bro, money. dumb money. <laughs> no, their fucking but, stadiums right by the airport, bro. It's it. But I will say this, dude. I will say this. I will. That, that's that's a diss to Tampa Bay. There. I will say this though. It is pretty cool that they have a fucking pirate ship coming through their stadium. That's yeah, that. Yeah. That is dope. No, but I, I I would say it's interesting because uh the, the Patriots made really really good pickups. I I, I don't, we'll see how Cam plays with actual weapons now, but their pickups are freaking nice. And the fucking quarterback the quarterback looks like a, a carbon copy to what fucking Tom Brady looked like. <laughs> no, when him up. He, but he's not fucking... gonna play for a couple of years. It's gonna be Cam's year. Yeah. Uh, they're, yeah. Cam, this is this is the make it or break it for Cam because if Cam can't perform with the weapons they got, like they're they're never gonna be able to. Perform, Motherfucker so spends too much time picking his outfits out instead of fucking <laughs> watching tape, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that that's gonna be interesting. Buck Buckslers look way too damn good. And then if Aaron Rodgers does end up going to like uh oh, the Broncos, the Broncos, the yeah, Broncos yeah. will be good. They will be really good. They just need a quarterback. Yeah. And the thing is, if they can get Aaron Rodgers, that'll be fascinating. But then also you got the Jags, bro. Let, let's talk, let's talk about the Jags. You know they got this crazy. They got one quarterback. Tim Tebow. No, they got Tim Tebow, bro. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. God. Tim Tebow as a tight end. We're Tim, really talking dude, about this right now. Tim Tebow is not going to be a tight end, bro. It, they're, they're I mean, he to... wasn't good as a quarterback. Maybe he'll be good as a tight end. Fuck he no, played dude. baseball yeah. he, in the oh, play league and then comes right Yeah, back. like all, all the only reason that people are like justifying him as a fucking tight end is because like, oh, he's big. It's like, and like people are like, oh, when he was a quarterback, he would push people away. It's like, that's like common now, dude. When Tim Tebow was playing back, when Tim Tebow was playing in like fucking 1985, like, yeah, sure. Like that shit was like, 
that shit was d- difficult. Like no one was really doing it. Bro, you know? I don't no think one he was, was born in 1985. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking around, but I'm saying like whenever the fuck he played, dude. Like it, oh sure, he would stiff arm a, a motherfucker that's trying to like take him down. Like oh that was impressive back in those days. But now you got people cutting like cutting left and right. You got quarterbacks who are so athletic <clears> that it's it's just it's commonplace now. We're in the era of uh, oh my god, why am I forgetting his fucking name? The Ravens, uh, the quarterback from the Ravens. Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. Lamar. Yeah. The, yeah, you're in the era of like the Lamar Jackson kind of thing. Like he brought that shit back, dude. Like the super mobile, athletic, feisty quarterback. Like it's back. I don't want to say Michael Vick because of you know his fucking <laughs> who who he was off the field, but like that, like shit, like that's back. You know. Yeah, and Jameis Winston looks real good for the Saints. Like he he's yeah. had a crazy offseason training. Um, I don't know. It's gonna be an interesting year because this is the first year they're adding an additional game. And also the the cap per team, like they're making super teams at this point. But it's hard for me to believe that the Bucks will not be in the Super Bowl again because of how stacked they, they are. Tom the Brady's, yeah, like and Tom Brady's entire philosophy is like he doesn't think he won unless he had an undefeated season. That's why he was so pissed at when they lost the Giants because they were going to be able to pull off the undefeated season. He he literally would trade back three Super Bowls to get one undefeated season. That's all he cares about at the end of the day. And then Eli and, tweeted back and he was like, nope. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. nope. <laughs> but Tom yeah. Brady, the Bucks literally said that you can play for them until he's like 50. Like they just, they just straight up said, like, you know, as long as you can play, we'll, we'll keep signing you until you're 50 years old. My I'm man's like, gonna bro, be that's... on fucking stilts, dude. <laughs> just fucking chilling. Still slinging. So uh, you, you think it's gonna... I think they're gonna win it. Yeah. yeah. I think they're gonna win it again. What isn't, uh, isn't the Super Bowl at SoFi this year? Uh, it's either this year or next year. Yeah, I think uh, so. It's yeah. this year, right? It's at SoFi? Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it, Val. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to liquidate the company and get some uh, Super Bowl tickets? Uh, how about we just that's you a, know sign a bigger client like SoFi and just get that's tickets, a scheme. Oh, go. <laughs> it's, 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 this uh, this entire company has been a ploy for me and Val to get fucking uh Yo. to get some Super Bowl tickets. Man, been plotting for this year in advance. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to build a company so we could liquidate just so we could watch one Super Bowl. Fuck it. Okay. Hey, good. Good move. He's like move. worth it. Yeah, yeah. worth it. And did you uh, see the Raiders though? They got a, a whole club at like they literally are building like uh, club tables and everything like that behind the field goal post. Um, that like the seats are insanely expensive, and they have like DJs that are gonna be playing and stuff like that. Of course, the Raiders would do that in Vegas. But like, would you guys pay to be in that club at a, watching the game and having like a DJ, having bottle service, seeing on the nice comfy seats? Is that an experience you would want to have? Or would you have like the grueling seats when you have like three guys next to you that are clearly overweight yelling at you, throwing hot dogs at you? Wh- which experience would you rather guys have? I don't know if you could tell by my angry eyebrows as you were talking, but like I would never find myself at a fucking Raiders game, dude. Like first off, unless it's like a- <laughs> you, you never see that Raiders game. <laughs> <laughs> the Raider Nation fucking scares me, bro. That and the fucking, uh, the You're Bills Mafia. Yeah, They're the Bills bomb. Mafia and the fucking Raider Nation is fucking, it terrifies me. <laughs> like to go to a game wearing like a fucking Rams jersey, like <laughs> get out of here, bro. I wouldn't. I would just come wearing a, a, a t-shirt. I would. I would be wearing this, but I'd be like in my like. I'd be like fuck yeah, like whispering under my breath whenever the Rams go to touchdown. I think at a I think at a Raiders Charger game a few years ago here in San Diego, someone got stabbed, or was it yep. in Oakland? I would. I wouldn't doubt it. So. Yeah, it's, both, that happened there, at it's happened in both. It's happened at both. Oh, it's happened in Oakland go. and it's happened in San Diego. When yeah, they used yeah. to be in San Diego. Yeah, so I, I would steer clear away from a fucking Vegas Raiders game. But to answer your question, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't. For me, when I like watching sports, I don't want to be in like some club drinking environment. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily saying like, oh, this motherfucker's throwing hot dogs at me is like a more attractive um, place for me <laughs> to sit down. But I'd probably be best found sitting there. It would just yeah. be like, yeah, yeah, it's like a mosh yeah. pit, but with football. Yeah. <laughs> my my favorite part of soccer games is getting the fucking bleeder, like the cheaper tickets, and just getting showered with beer whenever like your team scores. Uh, any like you know, it's like that's the best part about like going to MLS games or going to like national games and stuff like that. Just bro, leaving. I went, I went to a Chivas America game in Mexico. It was bro. so crazy. Like they were shoving bro. fights, fights, literal bro. fights. I was wearing a Chivas shirt and they, the security made me take it off. Damn. What? Yeah. Damn. You'll, you'll get fucked up, dude. I, yeah. I went to a... Yeah, you probably saved my life, Loki. <laughs> 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 I uh, I went to a... How cool was it? It was, um, it was the Mexico national team and I think Jamaica. It was like a qualifying game and it was at the Rose Bowl. And 
even that shit got rowdy for no reason bro like there were like there were like two fucking jamaica fans and like in a sea of mexico fans and like i was in the bathroom and there was this one dude who was just belligerent drunk who was just like spouting off about the fucking the game and then like some guy was just like hey you need to fucking shut up and he comes out bro he like he like he, he put his shit away in like a nanosecond like we're talking like like he's put put it away zipped it up and he like gets up to the guy and like fucking pins him against the wall and it's like what the fuck did you say bro he's like i'll fuck you up and the guy's like yo <laughs> like he's like i'm not trying to get into anything dude and i'm sitting there like my god like what this is like off of like two modelos right now like y'all need to chill dude <laughs> Modelo said different down there, I guess. Hey, okay, and those tall boys are different, dude. <laughs> God. Crazy. Oh, man. Um, yeah. John, though, what, what would you rather do? Sweet or uh, the hot dog? Hot dog chairs? Probably the sweet. I feel like that would be safer, right? And probably more comfortable, too, with the nice chairs they have. Definitely sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, what do you, uh, what, uh, who's, your, uh, who's your team again, Val, for NFL? NFL-wise, uh, it, it's been the Patriots. I'm, I'm a huge Boston fan for everything. I know you guys will hate on like Celtics, the yeah, Patriots, the everything, area. like Red Sox. I mean, I because I when I when I was younger, like that's when I got into sports was when I lived in Boston. Uh, but then coming over, like I've I've, I've loved watching the Chargers. I've loved lo- loved watching the Lakers. I know that's like the most contradictory thing ever. You cannot like the Celtics and the Lakers at the same time. That like is banned. I can't I can't allow that. Um, but I mean, football wise, like it's it's always been the Chargers and the Patriots. I, I've always loved watching the Chargers because I've been in San Diego and been able to win those games. But at the same time, I've always loved the Patriots. But I'd have to be low key about that in, in California, man. Especially at UCR, I was always just like, uh, when the Patriots won the Super Bowl my freshman year, I was just like, yeah, like in the back, and everybody's just like, <laughs> fuck these guys. I'm like, oh my bad, my bad. Bro, the, the <laughs> next day I wore like a I wore like a Brady jersey. I had this like Patriot pullover. I used to be like all Boston sports fans too. I still like the Celtics. Once Brady left, I stopped liking the Patriots. I was really, really disillusioned with everything. Mm. Once Mookie left the Red Sox, I'm like, fuck the Red Sox. Nah, I, dude, I, yeah. I hate Without this. the Mookie, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's about Coco Chris, man. It's about Coco Chris back yeah. in the day, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. And then I, the only the only hockey run I've ever watched was in 2013 when the Bruins beat the Canucks in like six games or something. Mm-hmm. And then the very next day, I think the city of Vancouver erupted and like rioted in the streets because they lost to the Bruins in the Stanley Cup final. And then like a week after that, I visited Vancouver. I'm like, oh yeah, this is where they, they broke the windows. <laughs> and it was it was kind of a surreal moment for me. But that was that was it. That was like my sports fan. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I mean, I'd say I'm a Rams fan. I didn't really start watching football until recently, but I'd say Rams and Lakers, my teams. Yeah. Yeah. All LA. I, uh, yeah. I growing up, my family, except for my dad, was a Raiders fan. So everyone was was big time Raiders. Um, and then my dad was a is still a Cowboys fan. Um, uh, he fucking goes back and forth. Like he he roots for the Cowboys primarily, but he likes Green Bay a lot. Um, but then like I stopped watching football, and then I was just basketball. So I've always been a Lakers fan. Um. And then I got back into football when the Rams came back. Cause I was like, okay, cool. Like there's actually like a decent team in LA that I can go watch. Um, so I got back into that. And then MLS, I'm an, I'm an LAFC fan, not an LA Galaxy fan. Um, and that's really, I mean, for fuck, hockey is the only sport that I, I don't have like a local team. Like I, I'm a, I like the Sharks just because back in the day when I was first getting into hockey, uh, their goalie Niemi was like a fucking God. And I was like, that guy's so fucking cool. And I was like, I'm going to be a Sharks fan. But then he left, and now it, they're not that good anymore. <laughs> like they're they're decent. They don't get me wrong. They made it to the playoffs and stuff like that. Like they make it to the playoffs and they make it pretty far. Um, but they just don't got it in them anymore. I don't think to to kind of take it far. So now I'm I'm kind of leaning on becoming either a Ducks fan or a Kings fan. Yeah, I mean ho- hockey's like because I'm originally from Finland. Like that that's our sport is hockey. Like that's why I grew up loving hockey. Grew up and like you brought Niemi and stuff like that. Finland's known for their goalies. Uh, Dukaras, Niemi, all the all these players. So, like, I, I love going to hockey games. And if you guys never gone to a hockey game, you got to go to a hockey game. Talking about like Americans watching hockey, they just wanted to watch fights. That's literally why Americans go watch hockey games. Everybody's sure. drunk, and the best comment I've ever heard in my life was when I went to a hockey game. They're like, "Oh, don't worry, it's only the third quarter when it's it's three periods. It's, there's no quarters in it." And they, I was like, when I heard that, I'm like, 
bruh. Like, I just, I, I need another beer. I'm getting out of here. Like, I, I can't, I can't deal with these people anymore. But, uh, but there's always fun. They're always a good time. Um, I, I think the most engaging sport uh, to watch in that aspect. But the reason why I love like basketball, there's always something happening. Basketball, soccer is just the atmosphere of the stadiums, right? And then football, I just like it because I understand the sport so well. So I think that's for everybody. It's like you, you got to have that sport that you just get and like and you know, you're all about it. And uh, I mean, for you guys, it's obviously basketball. Um, but yeah, I mean, to to close out today's show, I know we talked a lot about like, you know, getting into sports journalism, you know, building out your guys' podcast and going into some banter around sports and Luis getting banned from uh, watching jazz games. Uh, but to close out today's show, we always end with a, a failure story. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to hear if you guys have some kind of story to share. Um, they can be anything. The main reason for it really is just to articulate something that was a learning moment for you guys that helped you guys get to this point where you're at in your life because uh, nothing's ever a straight line. You're always going to deal with some stuff in your life that um, you learn a lot from. So the floor is yours. If you guys have any uh, story you guys want to share. All right, John, you take the floor. I'm still thinking about mine. What? I... <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, you, you go ahead, bro. I got so it. is this supposed to be like professional related? Yeah, right. It could be anything you want, man. I, I, we've had we've had everything from professional to not professional, but it's just anything that was a learning moment for you in your life. Well, I feel like graduating in 2020 in itself is kind of like a failure story because the job market completely crashed. And like at the time, everything was shutting down. I was in the process of doing interviews for a position with like ESPN Next, which was like this um, like production assistant program where they keep you for like a year. And I did two interviews and then basically they shut everything down and I never really heard back from them. And I'd say that was my failure story. And I think that's something that the class of 2020 can definitely relate to. Got it. So, I mean, from, from that moment of like not being able to get that opportunity, do you think that kind of give you guys more fuel to like work on your podcast and start building out technically foul because you kind of wanted to put your passion into something else then at that point? Yeah, without a doubt, like after that, I think shortly after that is when I hit, hit up Jared too, because I was like, I want to make sure I'm still progressing. I also did like some writing competition, which is how I kind of got to know or became aware of Jeff Perlman, who we had on a podcast. Um, and then I applied to grad schools too. And like I said, I'm going to be going to Northwestern this fall out in Chicago. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's one of the top journalism programs in the country. So uh i'm very excited about that and i think it, that definitely helped me like push me to do that because with the job market failing i was like i don't want to be stagnant i want to keep progressing so how can i do that and that's what i ended up doing yeah no that's, that's awesome man congratulations for uh Thanks. for getting in thank you bro yeah all right definitely... your turn your turn man <laughs> yeah no I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it um but I, was, I also just wanted to say that it's more gratifying being able to produce like we're in charge of our, our success and what our like passion and work is as opposed to having to rely on someone to accept us like i can send out hundreds and hundreds of job applications and then i don't hear anything back but it's it's better that at least we're at least doing something that we like love and are passionate about that being said my failure story isn't necessarily like one um like certain moment but it's just graduating college and thinking that I was going to be like handed a job because of all the work experience I put up in college, put up in undergrad and thinking that I didn't have to do more to prepare myself. And um, I don't know if it was like a, a confidence versus cocky thing, but like I would look at my work resume was because John and I's work resume is, is almost like the same in undergrad. Man, we did a lot. We did like all this extra stuff. We did commentary. We did a radio show. Um, we we both wrote for all different types of sports at the at the university paper, and it was ignorant of me because it's like yeah, every motherfucker in America <laughs> that wants to pursue sports <laughs> journalism is doing the exact same thing, um, if not at least focusing on one thing. And they all got internships during during college during like the the summers in between their second and third year or whatever. So it was it was just assuming that I was like in a better position than than anyone else, and that I I don't know I I lacked some competitive edge in terms of like oh i can better myself i was just like yeah no i did fine and i was content with that so that's that was a failure story that i had to overcome for sure and like get out of my own world and i did so much and you know was qualified and yeah here we are 
<laughs> no, definitely. I know. I, I, I like that story a lot because I think that resonates with a lot of people is that you tend to look at your own experience, but you just don't understand like, yeah, like everybody who's trying to get that exact job is going to go for those same exact experiences and really have that same credentials. And you have to somehow separate yourself and, and keep improving and kind of pushing forward from both of you guys' experiences. Do you have any like uh, uh, advice for, you know, younger people that are right now, you know, getting ready because graduation right around the corner right so both your guys stories about your guys graduations a year ago and then two years ago um so would you have any advice to those students that are going to be graduating this year so i guess before i say anything like the disclaimer would be like i don't think i'm that successful yet or landed my dreams out or whatever but based on my anecdotal experience it would be to one obviously network and two always update your resume because i found myself looking at my resume and then i would type something and I, I would look at like a past um, like little bullet point, and then when I start thinking, I'm like, this is something that I wrote in my 2019. I should be updating this more. Um, like your writing style and the way you present yourself obviously kind of changes too. So yeah, updating like updating your resume more, um, curating the cover letter to the specific company that you're working for, not just <laughs> what I used to do was like, I'm just gonna change the header and <laughs> like the intro like of like what the company was, and then. I would just be like, yeah, let's just like pump it out. Let's just send like hundreds and hundreds of these. But it wasn't as like personal and mm -hmm. I guess intimate as a cover letter should have been. So yeah, I, I would say those. Definitely. Yeah. How about you, John? I would I would just say one, just like make sure you apply a lot of places, but also just be willing to do the work. Like you're not gonna start off with your dream job. So you you're probably gonna have to accept something that isn't what you were initially going for and just do the work. Um, that's something that's always been big to me. Like sometimes you're going to have to work for free. Like this podcast we're doing for fun. It's not something where, you know, we're going to be getting paid, but it's just about building experience, building your skills and really like investing in yourself. So you're ready when the opportunity does come to take it. No, absolutely. I think both of you guys' feedback is fantastic. And, and it really resonates with a lot of students that um, are, are going to be gearing up because yeah, anything you want in life, you got to do the work to get there. Um, and then also, it's a stepping stone thing. Like where you're at today doesn't mean that's going to be your permanent state. You can always, you know, advance from there, but you have to understand that and, and figure out the ways that you can personally invest in yourself and get to that next point. Um, but yeah, no, dude, I, I love having you guys on the podcast and um, it's, it's been a bit great conversation. I know you guys have your podcast, Tech and Out, which now we're officially going to be uh, getting you guys more content and getting that out there. So super excited to be working with you guys on, on your guys' podcast overall um wanted to kind of leave the door open if you guys want to uh plug it real quick you know where can people you know check out your guys's podcast what is some content that is going to be coming up sometime soon just so that those that are listening today can uh, check out and stay up to the loop when it comes to um nba analysis and later down the lines other other sports as well yeah technically follow the sports podcast you can catch us on spotify catch us on apple Podcasts. we recently did a episode a few weeks back kind of detailing and looking at the last dance um one year later and just our takeaways and analysis of it of of what it was like watching it in the moment and if we would watch it nowadays just the rewatchability about it um obviously we're gonna have an episode detailing like our reactions to the play-in and then more seating and other playoff um yeah other playoff topics should be coming out soon yeah, we're also going to look to have more guests on as well. People like in the industry who have written really good articles, like someone who I've been wanting to have on for the longest is Miriam Fader. So I'm really hoping to reach out to her soon, hopefully have her on. She's at the ringer right now. So um, I think a big part of why we're excited about this partnership, too, is it's going to take away from our editing time, which is going to give us more time to reach out to potential guests and have more more fun people on um, to share their experiences, too, in the business. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And we've had a decent amount of pretty solid names in like the sports journalism or, you know, assistant coaches for like the NBA. We, we had Jeff Froman on. He's a New York Times bestselling author. He just wrote a Laker book. Uh, Seth Rosenthal, he works at SB Nation. Kevin Eastman, who was the assistant coach for the Celtics when they won in 08. And um, we also had Kalen Jones from The Ringer. He's a NFL writer at The Ringer. So the fact that we were able to kind of like put those list of guests together with our very very limited resources and the fact that there are some episodes where we would just be like yeah i'm on my phone in my car um let's go ahead and start this podcast so you know we're, we're trying to look a little bit more sophisticated we're slowly progressing going up so yeah we just want to get more guests out there 
No, absolutely. Like I said, I, I, lo I loved talking with you guys. It was a great insights. Uh, like I said, I don't know that much about the NBA and it was good, good hearing your guys' analysis about it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll not say my, my picks again. So Luis doesn't want to kill me <laughs> off screen, uh, but um, absolute pleasure. Um, definitely for everybody who's been in the chat today. Um, I'll let Luis protect himself and uh, give his give his two cents um, not off camera, not on camera, so okay, that <laughs> so that I this shows integrity. That. This shows integrity can also be withheld, but uh, Preserve but uh, it. yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, absolute pleasure having you guys on. Definitely, we'll have you guys on another time, sometime soon. Uh, for those listening today, definitely, definitely check out Technically Foul. Um, but that that's mainly it for today's uh, today's show. Uh, thank you for tuning into the Brew. Uh, this is when uh, Nick, your cue to uh, you know drop drop all the social links into the chat, um, and um, we're we're pretty much set for today. But thanks for tuning in for everybody.